Okay, so you went to Newcastle straight from Coventry. Twenty-eight goals, ninety-three games. Um, what was like? Move. What was life like moving to Newcastle? Because we, I, I, we, after speaking to the Kieran Dyer one, I didn't realize how I did know how much of a big football club it was. But the difference in like the life, the fans, yeah, everything. What What was that like for you? Well, when I when I, I remember going there the first time, um, and then you see the Angel in the North. Um, I'm like I played there as well. I played against them, and I should have scored a few goals there, missed loads of chances, uh, as I usually did. But, That's why they um, didn't want you in first. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but um, it was a great place to go and play. Even for an opposition play, it was like what a place this is. You know, like the stadium, how full it was. Yeah, but even as you're traveling to the game, you see them come across the like across the river, you know, across the bridge, and it's just like uh, you know, like. The stadium's in the middle of the city. Um, and usually you have like big cathedrals and no matter where you go, you have like a, it's the stadium. Yeah. Um, and that's church. That's it. Then, that is castle. it. That yeah. weekend is, that's what they go to. And they all um, adore that football club. It's their home. Um, they're beyond passionate about it. Um, the bars, everything leading up to it's a real special place. It's a special, honestly, it's such a special football club. Um, the fans you take away from home, the support, once they, they're with you, they love you, then they're with you. They're like, I won't have a bad word said about you. Um, and it was, you know, I, I knew when I first got there, because the thing with that area, it's like, it's so football run, you know, from like, there used to be like three newspapers there, you know, all about the football. Yeah, yeah. Then it'd be like a two hour radio station every day. Um, like three legends used to call it. Um, who would have an opinion, a big opinion. Um, some of it not quite accurate either. I thought, look, I understand radios as well. It's good cop, bad cop. Yeah, of course. You know, you say something really good, you say something the opposite. Simon Jordan. And yeah, and yeah. no, but you've got to get your phone in. You've got to get yeah, your people replying. That's what, you know, I, end up, I completely understand that. But there I thought they were, um, you're supposed to have the best interests of your club. Yeah. I don't feel they did. Um, at times, so I thought the way the they spoke about players, I was okay. They were reasonably okay with in me. the early you, days. You can, yeah, but you can be if you're doing you're doing reasonably well. But the way they spoke about other players, I thought was like borderline. Um, I wouldn't say just out of order. I go like not far off disgusting. You know, I'm talking about Sunderland players as well. I'm talking about Middlesbrough players. Um, it, this is not. You're not an ex player when you talk like that. You ain't. Um, and I just felt, yeah, and it was it had a big impact on, you know, I, you would see how they went, they assassinated people, and I would see the crowd turning on them. It was like, where's that come from? You know? But, you know, we we were doing okay. We, I say we're doing okay, we done more than okay. We started the season recently, and we just went on from there. Great attack line, you know, you look, Solano, Kieran Dyer, Gary Speed, Lauren Robert, that side, me, Sheeter up top. It was just relentless, honestly. It was, um, and to play with the likes of Solano um, yeah, and the movement I learned from the year before being coached by Strachan was just like. Match, match oh, made in heaven. It was, it was just, and I felt at home. I felt like 52 or 1,000, this is where I should be. This is what, you know, this is what I should be doing. Um, and I remember like people would always say like, it's easy playing well in front of 52,000. Can you play well when they boo? because they will boo when it's not going your way. And I love that. It was like, when they turned, you know when you went 1-0 down or, and the crowd went quiet and yeah. they started turning on one or two players, because it, it can happen. I love that. It was like, give me the ball. I'll show you, like, what do you mean I can't play while it's not going well? I'll show you even more I won the ball. Um, and I think they took to that as well. It was like, well, here, keep going. Um, but it was pride for me. It was not just, I wouldn't say pride, it was mm. stubbornness. It was like, well, yeah, I'll play, even no matter what the score is, I'm going to keep one on the ball. Um, and it just worked. It just, I could turn games around. Um, but like I said, I was just in a real good group of players. Um, and then we finished fourth that year, the first year there, got PFA Young Player of the Year. Unbelievable. It was honestly, it was that. And I, I, I got injured, I'd done my knee, I tore my patella tendon towards the end of that season. Um, and I was playing that well. We had so many games left. I just wonder, look, it, it don't keep me up at night. Don't worry about that. It's, um, I wonder if we could have won our league because we were in distance. We really was. 
you know, we had some like seven, eight games left. Um, all we needed to do is win like some like six of them. And they were doable games as well. Um, yeah, we could have, but we never know. You know what I mean? But it was, that first year was was incredible. Yeah. So it was incredible. And then going into the second year, like I said, I was injured then. Manchester United tried to sign me. Um, Alex Ferguson, Eric Harrison, who was unfortunately the late Eric, Eric Harrison, who was with me in the Welsh squad. He, he's the one who brought through the 92 squad yeah. and, you know, okay. your Beckhams and all that. Um, he, I had contact with him. He was like, look, so Alex wants you. Um, and I, honest, the honest truth, I never felt like going. I was like, how many players have ever been at Newcastle and said like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to stay here and then not go Manchester United. Um, but I was, and maybe there's the Liverpool ness in me. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. But it 100%. was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that badge, I just don't know. It just wouldn't sit. Um, no, but there must have been a lot of emotions towards Newcastle, Newcastle United. At the end yeah, of the day. it was. It was just a, a brilliant period. It really promoted me, and really, you know, like I was just playing with such good footballers. And when you're doing well there, um, the Champions League as well, oh, you know, it was. And I like, look, and they I, haven't been. Like I told you, I see, like there was some people were saying, oh, "You ruined uh, European football for New for Newcastle oh, and stuff." It's, it's, I, uh, it's insane. But they've never been to that that position since no. then. God, not not since then, and only once really before that with Asprilia and you know that era, which was an incredible team. I loved that team, like everyone did. But when I signed there, you know, don't forget, I finished about fifteenth or thirteenth in the league. They are better players. Listen, Alan was injured for a long period at that time. Um, and it just matched. The, the manager was incredible. Uh, we had an incredible manager, you know, Sir Bobby Robson. How he, how he, how he, you know, how he moved the team into what he wanted. Um, he wanted speed, wanted energy, but with talent, with you know, with the way Newcastle would want to see football. He's from the area, so he understood yeah. it. Um, people talk about discipline. The squad wasn't, and it honestly, yeah, we had players with opinions. Um, you be in one, or yeah, it was a little, chance? yeah, little one, yeah. Um, but we worked, <laughs> we trained hard. It was like, you know, you ask anyone who even trained with us, you know, if anyone came in, it was like, you know, it was, it was good. It was, we were good. We were really good. When um, Sunes came in, what was the vibe switch like then? Did it, did it, was it different? But, you know, like it was, it was a shame. I was really, um, I was hurt the way Sir Bobby went. Um, and I felt like I was a little bit out of it, but I felt they, they look for players. They blame players for it. Like they blame Kieran. He was part of that. It was all because of him and all because of one or two others. Um, some I was blamed, some I wasn't. Um, it had nothing to do with the players. No. You know, they were looking for this way before it. It was done by Freddie Shepard. Um, and Paul Strafford was involved in that, the agent who's... Freddie Shepard's son worked with. Um, Graham was involved. So we knew what was happening. Um, and then Graham came in. And I honestly, I like the game is the game as well. And, you know, let's see what this brings. But from the first day, it was difficult. It was like he had a meeting, you know, well, I'm here to win fucking trophies. <laughs> you know, that's what yeah, he said yeah. straight away. This club hasn't won anything in this amount of time. You've lot haven't won anything, and I'm here to win. So, if you ain't here to win, now fuck off, because we're gonna win something here. And I remember in my head was like, well, this club haven't won anything in forty odd years. And we just had Bobby Robson as well. Like, are you that good then? You know. But then I could imagine me, you like. But I'll part of me was music to my ears. I was yeah, like, yeah. God, because I want to as well. You Do you know think it I mean? was just a personality clash you both? Or? No, I I just felt for it really. I felt I felt um, he was looking. He was looking for it. He was looking to stamp his mark. Um, and the media were like, you know, we were like there was a nickname like the Brat Pack and all that. Yeah. And, you know, Bling Bling, bling, bling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck, it was such crap. Um, well, that's that's probably the mix in it, the environment, like you said, of Newcastle, the fans, the radio stations, it yeah, all of talking. It was, it's yeah. all coming it's in at once. Selfish and, bunch of this, and you know yeah, what I mean? People and, are frustrated 40 yeah. years of nothing. And, yeah, and I end look, right? Look, I get that. Um, but it was just, you know, like when, when you're doing well, the expectation really rises there, you yeah. know, like I remember like, you know, finishing third and it was like, well, next year we've got to win the league. <laughs> yeah, Otherwise yeah. it's been a failure. And I like, 
we, we weren't there. And I mean that Liverpool were better. Chelsea were spending. They were getting better. Uh, Man United were Man United. Arsenal were Arsenal. You yeah. know, they just got a season unbeaten. Um, you know, these teams were just forces. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, that was right. Man City weren't there and during that time. But it's like to compete with these, like these are, this is what they do. This is what, you know, you yeah. like, you go into these football clubs, they ain't just got Premier League, they've got European Cups. Yeah, They're like, yeah, yeah. this is what these lot are designed for. This is what they've been doing for like 20, 30 odd years. This is what their ex-players can talk about. The players at Newcastle couldn't talk about that, their ex-player. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like, it wasn't a place that where there was no real trophy room. Do you understand what I mean? There was no real culture of... Um, history. Of, uh, yeah. Of, no, they, they, like, they got a history, like every club has, but it, was, it wasn't that winning, you know, it was entertainment. Yeah. It was an entertainment value. And I just felt like before that, they wanted like a big brother TV stuff. Now, look at it now, it's a miracle because they so many clubs have done it. They wanted like chain, like cameras in the change rooms. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's mad though. They, they wanted that back then. Yeah. But at the time, like us, us as players was like, no. What the fuck no, is it? Like, yeah, it's not, I, I can't, what are we? And I remember yeah. we done, I remember that film Goal. Oh, and it was, yeah. I, do you know what? It made me cringe because of like the CGI was so bad on yeah. it. Like, because they done it's one with like to make a good they done one with Madrid as well, didn't yeah, they? It, yeah. it might have been the same one, but he yeah, was like yeah. a Newcastle player and yeah. Well, yeah. that like that all that started to happen, and and I remember we played. Not even when uh, thing, mate. Wait, <laughs> but we played Marseille in, the, in a UEFA Cup semi final. Was it? Yeah, UEFA Cup semi final, Europa League semi final. Sorry, and I remember like Bob Robson didn't really want to ask, but he had to ask because he was sent from above. And it was like, do you know when we train on the pitch at Marseille, you know, we'd have like a game towards the end. Can the actor who was playing a part in goal, can he train with us? And I like as part of the film where they could get I can, their ima I can imagine and I, you. And no, I remember like Wait, hang on a minute. I was injured. <laughs> I was injured though. So and I come over with his crutch. <laughs> I so I didn't need it, but I remember Speedo, Speedo really piped up. Yeah. And he was like, You fucking what? One of the biggest games this club's had, and you want an actor. It's not a fucking mockery, like. But that's what was like, that's what was going on. Um, and even talk of like, you know, I remember the, the chairman, you know, they get like Ferrari treatment, the training grounds all fit for a Ferrari, and they're playing like minis, you know, and it was always like speculation of this, then Robson's going to be getting sacked. It was just constant. Yeah. It was like. And you got um, the rape scandals in there. Oh, and... God, that was like, <laughs> that was incredible. Well, Dyer said the only person to pipe up in the change rooms was you, like when Bobby was kind of. Well, I remember, like, I was driving in. in. I took my, like, the kids to school and I was driving in and it came up on a radio. And I'm, we played Arsenal on a Friday. I was up, I come straight after the game up Newcastle, but a few players stayed down. Um, and I remember, it, like, it was like, what's going on there? And I came into our training ground and I seen TV, like, when just cameras, you know, the vans. And I'm like, oh no, something's happened here. So I've gone into the training ground and Kieran, didn't, uh, Kieran sorry, didn't really, Sheepish didn't really talk too much about it. Titus and all that didn't really talk, you know. So do you know when you're trying to like, well, yeah. what's going on here? And he was like, I don't know. And I knew something. <laughs> so then we, manager wants a meeting. So we're there, we're all sat down in the meeting room and he's gone like, who was in London Saturday night at such and such a place and involved in such and such incident. So I remember just the room was silent. And I worked, because I was in Newcastle, like a lot of other players, but obviously one or two. So don't you're looking round and you're like, yeah. Like, and Titus is not doing anything. Look at Kieran. He's like looking round. It wasn't me. Yeah, it was like, everyone's like, so out of nowhere then, he mentioned it again. And out of nowhere, I just, don't you just like, he was behind me. I remember it was, no, he was to my left side. And didn't you just feel the hand go up? But because I seen his eyes lock. So when I've seen his eyes locked, like I've looked. So I seen Titus just like hand up. And he's like, he went straight for Titus. Then he's like, what have you done? Uh, brought shame on this club. And, and I just like, I like, I listen, I, I loved Sir Bobby Robson. Um, and I don't like, I don't use that word love as much. You know yeah. what I mean? That's like, uh, I did. Um, and I was just like, hold on a second. You can't be talking to him like that in front of all us. You don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Don't you not need to speak to him one-on-one -on -one to find out what's happened? Mm. And then he went for me then. He was like, 
why don't you shut up? You? <laughs> <laughs> you always got something to say. And I'm like, it's well, the truth. The, no, I just felt like this is a conversation you two need to have. Yeah, not all in of us. In front of all yeah. us. And then you're having to go it, and we don't know anything yet. Because I didn't even know. And that's the honest truth. And I, I was close with Titus. But um, yeah, it, it was just a strange one. But it, like, I remember because the internet was big then. And I remember like, I remember the one show was doing something going oh, and they were going around God. asking people and it was like, oh yeah, yeah, I know who's done it. And they named about six players because some internet named six players and I was named in it. Oh. But I was in London and sorry, I wasn't in London, I was in Newcastle. So it was like, oh yeah. And they were, to be fair, they were trying to say like the power of the internet. Now they're accusing people, putting brandishing mm. them. But I remember the, the, the Sun article had the player, had Kieran in it, yeah, but he... Blurred his, blurred his face out yeah so I remember like they played Middlesbrough I was injured at the time um, and they were all saying you got a team full of racists um, sorry rapists. rapists sorry my fault who's the rapist on yeah, the way and Kieran and they were going at him yeah <laughs> um, and it was um, yeah it was that, that was it was just it was just a mad yeah, it was crazy time. it was really it was but it was that type of you could see it happening there in Newcastle you know what I mean with the players and with the media and people's opinion towards that group um, and it just, I don't know, I just got, I sort of started to feel a little bit out of love for football then. Yeah. Um, and then with Graham coming in, um, he wanted to interrupt that. Like, I'll sort this lot out. Don't worry about that. And, you know, I'll build you a team. And I got on with him. I had no problem with him. But he went for Lauren Robert. Lauren Robert didn't go anywhere with it. He was okay. Kieran knew better. And then he went for me. And I bit. I bit. Um, and I did, and I just um, not being um, not being wise, not riding that storm out, because he would have gone on to someone else. Then. Yeah, we'll probably see him what he done to Lauren Robert because he, he got him jumped him off the, the coach the yeah. one time as well, didn't he? Yeah. And then with Kieran, you know, they get mates at the end of the day, and you do, you know, you, you probably do. just sort of fuck. I've had enough of this. I've had enough. Yeah, but I, I sort of had enough of everything. You know what I mean? It wasn't like I said; it was the TV stuff. Yeah, then yeah. it was and I just it was just the opinion like I love football I honestly this is what I want to do yeah um, and it, it it felt like it wasn't becoming football anymore yeah, yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter what club you're at no much no much how much you would like you enjoy it or you feel you know you're progressing and this is what you know playing in front of 50 or 1000 was incredible it really was and going away from home was brilliant as well they, they were great but I just felt like I started to lose that buzz for the game mm. and I need it. I mm. really need it. Um, and I just, it just didn't, it, you know, like why are people talking about us? What have we done? Why are we front page of papers? You know, Liverpool and Man United, they must be looking at us, think, laughing at us, going like, look at those clowns there. You know what I mean? And we created so much media attention or we had so much media interest for doing what? You know, really, we should be talking about football. Um, yeah. But that got sidetracked. It went, we, we become a circus. And I felt like I played a part in that as well. Um, and I didn't like it. And I didn't like who I was becoming as well. Um, and I wanted to get back to football. I wanted to, you know, to, to find me, to be me um, and be part of the game that I enjoy so much. So for me then to leave um, was right. It was right. The circumstances, the way it wasn't ideal, but nothing is ideal. Yeah. You know, nothing works the way you want it to, but it was the right time for both of us, for both of us. And I still, you know, I, I still happy that I went there. Don't, honestly, I really am. It was mm. like, you know, I had such an incredible time there. I, I really did. But I sort of lost me there as well. Um, I started to become the person that I don't want to be. Um, I got involved in instances that weren't me, um, arguments that weren't me either. You know what I mean? It was I was draining me, yeah. um, and my you know how I'm, how my mind works as well. I was you know I was getting myself into a position where I weren't enjoying me. Um, you know, my wife at the time, you know, I could only apologize to her through that period as well. It was like you know she was completely devoted to me. Um, and done everything for me and the children. But, you know, as well as having two boys at that time, she was looking after the biggest one, 
which was me, yeah. you know? The two boys were easy for her. But then me involved in that was, um, you know, credit to her, credit to her as a person as well. But I felt we need to come away from this. Yeah. And this is not, um, this is not what I want for us and it's not what I want for me, you know? And a lot of it, like I said, was self-inflicted um, and just knowing, believing you know too mm. much when you, you don't know, you know, you know very little. 